Thanks to Pau scoring a 94th minute goal against Bordeaux, we won the Ligue 2 title to earn promotion at the end of season one. And our under 19s also won their league, so we may have a bright future ahead. We had five players make team of the season, including Etienne Green, who won goalkeeper of the season, and yours truly won manager of the year. We've got the lads playing some good football, leading the league in a whole bunch of metrics this past season. But League One is going to be a totally different challenge. So to Today we're going to make some sweeping changes to the squad to hopefully not get relegated. We're going to have to do it without our chief scout who is retiring after joining the club in 1983. What a legend. And the transfer window has the backdrop of a financial takeover that hit the rocks and then 24 hours later was back on the cards. But it finally happened, we have a brand new owner who isn't putting any more money into the club. So we still have 13 million to spend and 68,000 pounds per week spare in wages, which will increase when players leave the club at the end of their contracts. So I want a team of 22 players, essentially two players in every single position. Of the team that we had last season, there's only five players I'd be happy playing in a team in League 1. So Etienne Green in goal, Batu Binsika as our main centre back, Benjamin in there as that midfielder, Cafro on the wing and Divine as a striker. I will lay out our backup players in these sub positions. So Etting Green's our keeper, sub one translates to the keeper. The second player slot is right back, so sub two is right back. So so on and so forth down the list. There's five players that I've got in backup positions right now. Obviously uh, a goalkeeper, we've got Dennis Appiah as a backup right back, Florian Tardeu as a backup CDM, Ahmed as a backup winger and Brian Moreno as the backup striker to Divine. So that is 10 players in total, meaning we could actually end up signing 12 players in today's video. Perhaps I am being harsh because based on our current squad, we are predicted to actually come 13th in League 1 this season, which is well away from the relegation zone and a very respectable position. If we do come 13th this season, I'd be over the moon. That's because we just have one simple goal this season and that is not get relegated. But we have to strive for the best position possible so we're going to try and bring in a bunch of players. I also think we should probably switch up formations as well or at least change to a more defensive style of play. Now this formation last season worked wonders for us and we will keep it and actually I think we should play it against teams lower down the table but this is a very possession based formation and that will not work against the likes of PSG or Marseille. So I think what we do is probably keep the same shape but we change player roles, we change the instructions to be a more compact defensive side against those top teams. I'm still kind of in the scouting stage, right? This is my short list of players who are about to leave their clubs uh, at the end of their contracts, the free agent shortlist. I've also got a bunch of players who are still at their clubs we'd have to actually buy as well. But we're still in the scouting stage. I'm not fully set on, I mean, you can see 57 players. We're not signing all these players, obviously. They're just players that I think could be a good fit for our side after a very brief bit of scouting. However, I did see Gonzalo Estevez, who is a right back at Sporting, coming to the end of his contract. Now, in previous football managers, this guy is seen as a wonder kid and certainly someone that we could use to sell him a profit in the future. I saw that Southampton and Elche both put bids in for him, so I thought, right, well, why not? Let's just put a bid in for him and just see what happens. He'll go to Southampton or Elche. They're bigger clubs than us. But for some reason, he's chosen us, and I don't actually know if I actually want him. I kind of got caught up in... The, the hype of maybe bringing a wonder kid into the team. The bit that's made me think I don't want him is the £17,500 per week wages. That's a lot of money. I just, you know, put it on the table thinking he'd say no, really. So we have to think, what does he actually bring to the team? Now, we are either going to play him as an inverted wing back on the right-hand side when we play a more attacking formation, and he's, he's kind of good at that. I'm sure we can mould him into that kind of player. And if we also play him as a fullback sometimes this season as well in more defensive games, that where maybe he's maybe lacking Lacking a little bit there with slightly low marking and, and tackling and concentration as well. And um, that is quite important, I think, in a defensive player. So he lacks a little bit there. However, it's a free transfer and we are going to have to make a few of those today if we want to make our budget stretch. Another player that I was thinking of bringing in is Hugo Saquet. Now, he is probably slightly better, actually. 
with a bit more potential as well, but he's going to cost us 4.3 to 6.4 million. Potentially, that's half our budget gone immediately. There's also this guy as well, who looks pretty decent as a right back. Again, probably better than Gonzalo Estevez. However, Cadiz have just made a successful bid of 3.3 million pounds for him, right? So again, that's a, a third of our budget gone. What does he want in wages? We're interested. He wants more in wages, actually, to be fair, 22 to 28,000 pound a week. If we ask Hugo the same question, he wants 20 to 26,000 pounds. Okay, so, I mean, really... He is the worst of the three, but he's also the cheapest and he's got potential. So actually seeing those other sort of wages come through, I, I think Gonzalo is going to be our first signing of summer. So he's going to join us on the 1st of July. It's currently the 22nd of June. So about a week or so for him to come into the club. And actually with Appiah also being our backup right back, that is the right back position completely sorted for the upcoming season. So we should probably focus now on a player who can sort of do box to box and also a Carolero. Hello. Editing Tom here, I feel like you might need some context behind this formation that's just being shown on screen. I did spend about 20 minutes talking about it and then realised that 20 minutes in an episode about transfers talking about tactics isn't really ideal. Basically, I've tried to put together a more defensive formation. We'll talk about it more in an upcoming episode when we actually focus on playing matches and tactics. But basically, no, we've got two tactics, both in a 4-3-3, but very different instructions on there. One to more possession and attacking, one a lot more defensive. One such player is Pablo Martinez who can play both Carolero and box the box quite nicely and has a strong left foot to play on the left hand side of midfield. I would love to bring him in however it's going to have to be for 6.6 .6 million pounds which is a little bit concerning given that is what about a third of our budget no more like a half of our budget actually. What do you want wage wise? Uh, 14 to 20 thousand pounds a week which is doable. Can you bring that even down a little bit and they say yes. I think we're going to have to speculate to accumulate here a little bit and I think he would be a great player for our team. He's also consistent. He likes big matches, adaptable, a professional player. In fact, his personality is, or player style is leader as well. So, you know, potentially the future captain for the team. Played a lot of games last season in the second division in Spain. Did Levante get promoted last season? They almost did. So he would want to step up. They actually said it between £800,000 and £9 million. So... I mean, that's not really helping us out much at all. Can we put like, I don't know, 3 million on the table? Maybe not 6.6? .6? Ah, he's got a minimum fee release clause of 6.5. So they might not accept anything less than 6.5. Let's suggest three. And they've come back with 6.25, but actually spread over a few different things. So that's 300K there. Two point, I think we can bring this down. 3 million, two, 5 million pounds total. It's 5.2 essentially suggest that seems reasonable let's do contract with them quickly regular starter is fine by me bring the wage down to let's go for let's go 12 and a half to start off with leave everything else as it is and he wants 17 can we bring this down to 13.75 he wants that 17 what about 15 are you just gonna stick to, he's just gonna stick to 17 isn't he well in that case let's try and bring some of these uh, bonuses down a little bit to three and two and 750 suggest okay that seems reasonable so right back we've got a center mid if push comes to shove Florian Tardeu can play there if push comes to shove Ahmed can play there we actually don't have anyone for left center back or left back so that should be an area we need to look in now. Centre back with a left, oops, if I can type properly, left foot of, let's say at least strong, right? Uh, are there any? Why, why is no one coming up? Oh, because the role is still box to box midfielder. Any role. Okay, there we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? We are sorted by ability. This is the best player available, who is £12 million. Pounds. I'm not paying that sort of money for him. Perhaps another option is Jose Marsha. Plays for Andorra right now, valued at £2.9 Can play libero pretty nicely, actually, which is a, obviously a role we play on the left-hand side of defence with a left foot, but also can play a bit further forward if we need him to, and can also play as a centre-back on defend with fairly decent attributes. 2.9 is his release fee clause as well. 
which is very handy. So let's just suggest that and finalize the offer. Also, whilst we're at it, agent, um, he wants 12 to 14,000 pound a week, easy. Start negotiations then, let's see what he has to say. Regular starter, important player, I think we could maybe do that, but let's get rid of his ball playing defender nonsense. He wants to learn French, yep, and get rid of his attacker thing, easy. Suggest the promises, finalize the deal, negotiate the contract. It's actually quite nice compared to other players we've tried to give contracts to, but let's get rid of the wage rise and can we bring this down to £10,000 a week? Suggest he wants 12, how about 11.5? He wants 12, how about just a flat 12? He says yes to that. Also starting to get a few friendlies coming, which has got me thinking, we have a stupid amount of affiliate clubs. We do not need this many affiliate clubs, and particularly because most of them are rubbish. Now, this team are like in the French regional divisions and they offer nothing. Have they got any real players? No. They offer nothing to us. I'd keep Clermont because, I mean, they're in the second division, actually. Are we the parent club or are they the parent club? Oh, we're the senior club. Okay, so that's quite handy. Can we negotiate this somehow? Negotiate existing affiliation. And I think a loan agreement would be quite nice to send our players on there to get better would be quite handy. That's a good idea. Let's see if we can get that sorted out. Oh, it literally happened immediately. Okay, well that's quite handy. So we can maybe look to send some of our players on loan to Clermont this season. I think keeping this team in Senegal could be kind of handy. I don't think they're going to have any players. They've literally got an under 20 squad with no real players. But I think maybe because we've got them, we get some scouting advantages. Can we negotiate this? Commercial link, no. Loan agreement, no. First option, no. A decent, a decent thing with scouting here. Although hey, this does say actually recruit foreign youngsters. Let's try and get this in there then and they say yes they're going to try and look into that and they have done it so we get the first option to buy players from them and they can send academy players to us if they i wanted this to help with scouting really but this this will do now la Poya are a fourth division club we can actually see them so they do have real players that's worth keeping and it might be worth keeping this club who are in the league then the fifth division basically which isn't loaded into the game we can't see it but they have got a chance to get promoted so we could keep them all of these other ones that are like regional french divisions i think we just get rid of anyway away from that tangent let's look for a left back instead and ideally we're looking for someone who's not a complete wing back but more of an inverted fullback in fact let's just specifically put in inverted fullback and see what we've not got many players scouted out which is a bit concerning sorted by transfer value there are some players there so you know maybe we, we, we scout a couple of these so let's wait to see how many of those players come back with decent scout reports before we go in depth through a left back now one thing we might have to do is of course sell players today and our backup goalkeeper is wanted by reams but only for 2.1 rising to 2.7 million he's worth a lot more than that we're going to try and squeeze as much out of this team as possible i want a three and a half up front i want 1.5 down the line for 5 million and we'll get rid of this league appearance thing because we're not, we're not bothered about that give me 5 million pounds of him and i'll be happy and they cancel it straight away great he's now crossed right let's talk to you um and what we need to say is the finances work right in the deal what do you, th he thinks 5.25 million is fair and I said 5 million before. I'm going to drop it to 5 million pounds and just, you know, if someone bids 5 million, you can go. Oh, and also Pablo Martinez, the midfielder, is about to join us for 3 million pounds up front and 2 million down the line. So our second signing of summer is here. Pablo Martinez, the box-to-box -box slash Carolero, who will slot in wonderfully here lovely we also now get to the 30th of june where a lot of players are having their contracts expiring and they're gonna leave the club but the good news is gonzalo estevez is here uh, let's get you training right back as a uh, inverted wing back yes that's what we like to have you as please on support that means he slots in here gonzalo estevez and this team is slowly starting to come together now i'm not going to try and rush and get rid of all of these players i think there are some we could potentially use uh Brianson, uh, Petois, which I'm probably saying wrong because I can never get his name right. Uh, Moncondui, Wadji to an extent, right? I guess those top four could be fairly useful. Uh, obviously, Bukabida and Aki, are oh, they're all like one to the future. So actually, these three here, I might try and get rid of. So Sissoko straight away, ask agent about interest in the market. We want to get rid of him. Lots of loan to buy options. I don't really want that. I want to just sell him completely. Let's invite the offer in either way and see what comes in. Mahmood, you can also go as well. Can you please sell him? No one wants him. Okay, that's annoying. Um, can we hire an intermediary, please, to sell him? 
No one wants him as the intermediary. Great. Well, we'll just offer him out via the transfer room then for an unspecified fee. And then Louis as well. Ask agent about market interest. We're keen to sell him. There's no one wants him. Right. Offer via transfer room for an unspecified fee. Uh, also, Jose Marsha is here as well. So let's get him into the club. Our uh, bids have come in for Sissoko. They're all, they're all loans though. I don't want him out on loan. I want him sold. But a lot of them are just paying all his wages, which I guess is fine. I mean, if someone is paying all his wages, I don't really care. So I'll accept these two that have got 90% on the wages and just reject the other ones. Christian Riviera is certainly a man who could could do a job for us. Currently playing at Lille, but I don't think he's really in and around Lille's first team yet. They bought him last season, played eight games, didn't play brilliantly either. But I think if we played him as the halfback in some situations, I mean, the other option we play there is a ball, is a deep line playmaker, which he, he can do. I think he's probably more halfbackish. But I think the good thing about him is he's fairly cheap. Now, if we ask the agent about availability, we're interested. Wage a little bit on the high side. Can you bring it down? They say no. So maybe the option could be to loan him instead if we pay 100% of his wages and have a mandatory future fee of 1.1, 1.2 million, sorry. I guess it's cheaper than buying him outright though because the total cost of a loan will be 1.5 million with the monthly fees in there as well. You know what, let's suggest that, make the offer. That's maybe slightly cheaper to do. So we have to discuss a contract now with Riviera given that it's going to be a mandatory future fee of 1.2 million. So can we make this a regular starter and get rid of the vice captain? And he says important, okay, important player it is, £24,000 a week. If we can go to like, this is where the risk comes into play though, because if he turns out to be rubbish, we then have to sign him on a big contract at the end of it, which I'm not a huge fan of. Let's just suggest 20, he wants 25, 21, come on, don't, lads, please, let's not play silly games here. 22, he wants, right, 23. The injury proneness and lack of natural fitness is really getting to me a little bit there. Luckily, Vigo have made an offer, so maybe he wants to go to Vigo instead. But I mean, if Vigo wants him, who finished 13th last season in La Liga, you know, that does suggest he's, he's good. Oh, we've got a bid in for Mahmoud. That came, that took a little while to come through. I'll just accept it. I don't really care how much it is. I'll just accept it. Ahmed wants a new contract. You are not going to get a new contract, I'm afraid, lad. Uh, the club can't afford it right now. And he says, fair enough. He, he accepts that. I'm still not overly convinced by that midfielder that we looked at a minute ago who we've tried to sign on a big contract. I think this guy is better and younger and probably cheaper. Christian Belich. I'm sold just by looking at his attributes. We're keen on signing him. Uh, fairly cheap. Uh, yeah, great. Can we, can, yeah, let's get this done. Let's put a million pounds on the table. They want 2.3. That's his release fee clause to foreign. Okay, accept those demands. Weirdly has less interest in joining West Ham than us. So that plays to our favor. Star player, can we say important? Yep, yeah, that's fine. 15 grand a week is much nicer than 23. And he might even want to bring this down a little bit, maybe. He also wants... Mm, more money after international appearances. Let's put 10 games on that. Bring that down to like 17 and a half and then bring you down to like 13 and a half here, which he, you know, we're getting there. 13 and a half and 18. He likes that. Good. And actually, yeah, he's better than Riviera. Riviera better in the air and technically, but the other, right, we cancel the bid for Riviera. Or maybe not yet in case he decides to go elsewhere. Riviera's our backup option here. Oh, and actually Riviera can play Carolero and, and mm, maybe we do get him as well to play as a backup. We do need a few more sentiments coming in. So actually, actually maybe both of them is a sensible idea. So Mahmood has gone. That is the first out of summer, 300,000 pounds. Oh, now this, this, this has rubbed me the wrong way. Divine already wants a new contract at the club. You literally signed six months ago. You are not having a new contract, Divine. And the club can't afford it right now. And he's happy with that. Okay, that's... Stay in your lane. We're looking for a left winger. And I've just found this guy. Uh, he's 21 years old. Made a cap for Serbia already. Plays on a left wing as a winger, but only has a right foot, which is slightly concerning. But Ahmed had that as well. And he had a pretty good season for us last time out. Quite pacey, decent. He's got a good base level and five-star potential. I think we could maybe do something with you. Cheap contract as well and a fairly cheap transfer fee. Could we put a million pounds on the table 
and they want two or oh, they want quite a bit i think we can cancel this and come back in tomorrow and get rid of like the percentage of profit from next sale we'll come back in tomorrow so now we can go on to this and go profit from next sale remove and exclude this time we might this i might just put 1.5 on the table and they want 1.9 let's go 2 mil 2. 3 million and uh, they want a bit more how about we go down to like 1.5 then and add installments of a million pounds 2.5 total and they like that oh we've also got a bid for our backup god I'd, I'd rather not sell him if i'm honest with you but if we are going to sell him i want 5 million and we agreed to 5 million pounds with him so give me 5 million up front and oh they said yes to that well i guess he's off then accept 5 million pounds for him Stefan Mitrovic though, let's do contracts with you. Squad squad play, yes, I like that. You respect that you're not that good yet, but we'll get better, finalize that. Uh, let's get rid of some of these future ways to make money and we'll also just put his wage up to 12, 11 and a half to sort of, you know, make him happy. Suggest so that uh, he wants 15 now, and lad, 12 and a half. Tw you will accept 12 and a half and you will be happy, thank you. Sissoko off out on loan, all his wages are pretty much covered, so see you later. Also, uh, the midfielder, Belic, is coming in. He's actually had his deal done first, so I'm happy to have him in the club as our first choice uh, CDM. Intensive language course. Etienne Green, welcome to the club, please. So you will slot in here quite nicely. In the meantime, Riviera, who we already gave a massive contract to, wants an even bigger one to come to us rather than Vigo. I think we walk away from Riviera. I just think it's a bit silly. But the winger, Mitrovic, is happy to join us as well. So a second Serbian joining us this season. So we just need a left back to finish off the first team. However, the scouts have been very slow in finding and scouting the inverted fullbacks. So do we just go for someone else, maybe? That feels a bit risky saying that i've just found this bloke called javi hernandez who can play as a left center back can also play as a left back and an inverted uh fullback as well on defend and i don't really think like you need dribbling for an inverted fullback i mean strength is pretty low that's a little concerning also 3.9 million pounds we don't have that right now so i think we leave that search a little bit longer the rules say max of five lone players allowed in a season and two from the same club. It doesn't say anything about restricting it to like, I don't know, three players in the match day squad. So actually we can maybe exploit loans a little bit here. So for example, this guy, Koba, could come into the club centre mid, can play in a whole host of positions. He could be fairly useful. I don't like the optional future fear 5.5 million in case he turns out to be rubbish. And actually that's a lot as well in monthly playing fees. So the loan would be about two million pounds. I mean, got a lot of potential. He's good right now. I'd rather... I'd rather change it to like an optional future fee rather than mandatory. Make the offer the loan. Can we go remove that? Add in an optional future fee of 5.5 million. What do you... I'm going to lock it in as well. Do you like that? And they say, yes, if you pay more in wages, why not? Let's see what we can do. If he turns out to be amazing, we may have got ourselves a bargain. I was looking at loan players, but Jose Fontan could be actually be a, a, a decent inverted fullback on the left-hand side as a permanent transfer listed for 1.7 million. Can also play left centre back too, but I wouldn't really play him there with kind of like poor heading and stuff like that. But if you compare him to like Jose Marcia, right, they're quite similar players. Marcia's better, but if we, if we want someone who's just like a bit of security, to play at left back. I don't think Jose's a bad option. So 1.7 million suggests that they accept it. Let's just hope for the best. Squad player, he wants a regular starter. Okay, we can we can negotiate down from there, I suppose. Uh, the wage is a bit expensive. Can we go to like 15,000 pounds a week, please? And reduce the signing on fee a little bit. Just keep it as it is. Oh, he's not gonna like this at all, is he? 16. He actually agrees with 16, to be fair. My concern is he's not very consistent and hates big matches. But I, in, I, in an ideal world, he's not our first choice. But our keeper, our backup keeper, is off for £5 million. Pounds. I'm a little bit annoyed about that. But we weren't going to play him, so £5 million is quite nice to get in. Does just mean we now have to find a backup goalkeeper. You are available on a free. Uh, you're good enough to be in this division, apparently. And your agent says you want £22,000 a week. Excuse me. We will not be signing you. There's a keeper here from Algeria, though. £110,000, 28 years old. Again, the scout says leading for the league below us, but that's actually quite good because he'll want to be a backup player then, I think. Ask agent about availability. Uh, yeah, very small contract. Good. 
Okay, excellent. Let's just put £110,000 on the table. Suggest, they say yes, we'll get you in. Quick contract to get back up. Beautiful. It's exactly what I want. You are wonderful. You're my favourite player in this team now. Also, Koba is coming in on loan for us, so that's a good addition to the team. Another loan option could be Manu Vallejo from Gironia. Can play both wings up front, both feet. Composure's low, but, you know, he can't have everything. Oh, but it's half a million pounds a month. No. No. You could be another option. You can play both wings. And actually, wow, it's it's actually fairly cheap. No monthly fees, fairly cheap wages. If we can just make him a squad player and then get rid of like that and just like lock in squad player and no preferred position. A little bit on the monthly fees, but that's fine. Center backs as well. We've got this guy who, you know what, it actually looks pretty decent. How are you compared to Batu Binsika? If we're going to compare the two of you right now, Batu Binsika, very similar, really similar. So I wouldn't mind you coming in on loan to sort of be a, a backup player, rotation option. We are going to optional future fee of like six million. Look, we're not going to buy him. We'll happily pay the monthly fees. It goes up to like a million pounds a season. If we just make you a squad player, lock that in, suggest they're happy. I think loans are the way to go for a lot of these players, actually. I think trying to, because we're going to grow quickly, right? The idea is we have this season survive and then we build next season. And so bringing in a load of players right now in a permanent deal who might not be used in the next three seasons, for example, might be a bit of a waste. At least that is how I'm justifying things right now. Luckily to distract us, the new goalkeeper is here, the backup keeper. That's absolutely perfect. Also, uh, the winger on loan is coming in. Lovely stuff. And so is the centre back as well. So they're both in on loan. We just need Jose Fontan to come in and then we're in a good position. And here he is joining the club. Send on an intensive language course. Florian, welcome to the club, please. So that gives us a, a first team essentially that I'm happy with. And actually, I think there's maybe a suggestion where maybe we, we bring uh, Koba onto the first team instead of Benjamin. If you compare the two of them, Koba is the better player. And then we just need to find a little bit more depth on the left-hand side of defence and in the centre of midfield. And that could be actually filled by Moncondui, Briançon and Petro. They, they could all fill in there, actually. At this stage, I think it's probably safe to offer Wadji out. I don't think he's going to spend much time with us this season playing at all. Anyone want to buy him? Uh, no, apparently not. Not. Intermediaries, can you help me out here? Yes, excellent, right. They're all very similar values to be fair, but the intermediary fee is a lot different. So actually maybe in the middle here, like this 5% regional agent could be all right, given us about 400,000 pounds. Our scouts still aren't doing anything in terms of left-sided inverted fullback. Scout priorities, We've got 84 players on this list. Okay, that maybe explains it. Tell you what, cancel all of them. Cancel all of them. Just focus on inverted fullbacks, please. Ah, Peck Zwoller have come in for Wadji, £375,000. Accept that. So he will be gone. Thank you for your service, but we need the money. Arrange three friendlies against Marseille, Atletico Madrid and uh, Inter Milan, I think it was. We have just... Lost 3-1 to Marseille, which is slightly concerning because we were set up to play in this new formation. It looks like Divine just picked up an injury as well. Out for two to four weeks. Not ideal. Oh, but we have just beaten Atletico Madrid playing our defensive formation. Now that is something. Maybe, maybe we could be onto something here. But I think it might take a while for all of these scout reports to come through. So I want to leave you on a cliffhanger. I want to leave you with the idea that we might sign someone we might not, but we probably will, but we might not. We will come back for the first game of the season against Marseille and probably actually play through until the start of September. And maybe a little bit beyond that, actually, because, of course, there are some teams we should be beating, like Bordeaux and Lorient there, to be fair. The signings that we have made put us in, wow, 10th place season preview. Maybe I shouldn't be so wound up about getting in a new left back and left centre back. And maybe we just use Briançon and Moncondui and uh, Petro as, like, uh, backup players. I mean, there's no harm in keeping them. Apart from Briançon, maybe, because he's on 13 grand a week, we can maybe get rid of him. But I'm surprised, actually. We've spent 16.75 million somehow. That seems like a lot considering the amount of players we've brought in. I think a real waste might be on Pablo Martinez. Five million pounds on him might have been a bit panicked to be fair. 
but time will tell how good he'll end up being. He's actually scored three goals in pre-season and five games so far. So, I mean, that is something. I think Gonzalo Estevez on a free is a good bit of business. Uh, Jose Master seems like a really good deal. And actually, these two kids from uh, Serbia, I think, will be really good, particularly Belic. I think he could be like a star of the future for us. Backup keeper, good value for money. The two lone players I think will prove to be useful this season. Uh, Fontan is a bit more of a backup player, I think. So I think maybe the first... The first five players there are going to be really good. And actually, Kobe will play quite a bit this season. Those six are going to be great for us. Those four, maybe not quite so much. But they all come together to make a decent team. And if we can finish 10th this season, that would be absolutely incredible.